Welcome, brothers and sisters. Today, our topic is divine jubilee. Let's set the context. I often take the time to help believers or to let believers remember that in the Bible, we have two references we call Old Testament. Note my words, two references. And sometimes Christians confused these two references when they're speaking. So we have Old Testament part of the Bible, what is called Old Testament part of the Bible, which is from Genesis to uh, Malachi, right? And we call it Old Testament. And we have Matthew to Revelation, which we call New Testament. The second part that we should remember uh, is that none of what I've just described now is Old Testament or New Testament when it comes to the covenant. So the word Old Testament refers to the Old Covenant. And New Testament refers to the new covenant. So you have to remember that difference. So when we are talking about Old Testament as a covenant, the Old Covenant, Old Testament as a covenant, we are referring specifically to the law that was given to Moses. And I make bold to tell you from the scripture and the spirit of God and the application today in Christ Jesus that that law has been abolished completely. There is absolutely no part of it that remains in Christ Jesus. So when we talk about the law, because we are going to study something, the principle that we're going to uh, uh, study is a principle of the old law, yeah? You should appreciate that, or old covenant. Now, so when we speak specifically about that law that was given to Moses, you have it in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Those are Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, those are the four. And then Joshua was the one who then, if you like, call it execution in terms of bringing the children of Israel into the promised land. Uh, but you see a difference because that teaches us a whole lot about what we can gain from God. Why I'm taking time to set this context is this. However, the Bible as a whole, the Bible as a whole, contains the word of God, both that specific law and the principles, therefore, are relevant at all times. So the Spirit of God will always use the word of God written. It's called the sure word of prophecy in the Bible to teach us. Praise the Lord. So we have to understand this because sometimes I hear people make argument about, oh, something is in the Old Testament and is therefore not relevant. No, there is the law. The law is completely abolished. So let's start from there before we get into our text. So we want to start from Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Open Hebrews chapter 10 with me. Let's read Hebrews chapter 10. It says, for the law, having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things can never, with this, these same sacrifices which they offer continually, year by year, make those who approach perfect. The law having a shadow of things to come. The law having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things can never, with these same sacrifices which they offer, Continually, year by year, make those who approach perfect. If you turn with me again to Hebrews chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 9. If we go down and read from verse 9. 
from verse 9. He said, it was symbolic for the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices are offered, which cannot make him who performed the service perfect in regard to the conscience. Consent only with foods and drinks, various washings, fleshly ordinances imposed until the time of reformation. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is not of this creation. Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is not of this creation. You can read further. I want to, then we can also see uh, Colossians 2, 17 says something close to that. But let's look at um, Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians. I love to read Second Corinthians chapter three. You can always read it all through. But if you look from verse seven, verse seven, it says, "But if the ministry of death, written and engraved on stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel note the word used here, it calls the law the ministry of death, written on stones." We are not in the ministry of death. We are in the ministry of life. Glory be to God. I'm reading verse 7, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Please note them down and study them yourself. But if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away? Did you see that? Which glory was passing away? The Bible is clear. We read this umpteenth times, but we don't want to just believe the word of God for what it is. So verse 7 there, he said, which glory was passing away? Eight, how will the ministry of the spirit not be more glorious? Nine, for if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. Ten, for even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their, but their minds were blinded, for until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. This is what I'm explaining to us. So the reading of the Old Testament here, some people think it's referring to the Old Testament Bible. No, it's talking about the law of Moses. That's what I'm trying to make us understand. And there are very specific books in the Bible that contain the law of Moses. So you have Genesis. It is in the law of Moses. And beyond Deuteronomy, actually, you just have the manifestation of God at various times, including the prophets. Does this mean they are all, that's what I, uh, the, 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 everything in Gen uh, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, we no longer, they are not relevant to us. No, the principles there are applicable, but the practice have been abolished completely without mincing words on any of them. The principles applied, the practice have been abolished to completely, not mincing words on any. Okay, so we we'll read for that. So you can see here, he says, unlike Moses who put a veil over his face, I'm reading verse 13 again, so that the children of Israel could not, not look steadily at the end of what was passing away, 14. But their minds were blinded, for until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, that law of Moses, because the veil is taken away in Christ. The veil is taken away where? In Christ. I think I want to just leave it there. 
that if you jump to verse 18, verse 18, it says, but we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord. So in Christ Jesus, as we continue to behold him, study about him, uh, live according to uh, his, the word of God and follow Jesus Christ, serving God through him, the spirit of God continues to transform our lives from one level of glory to another level to another level, and so we'll continue to grow. Glory be to God. So I'm taking time to share this because, as I said, what we're going to study, uh, we'll, 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 we'll be, it's, the, it's the Old Testament, I really mean the law practice, the law practice. But last of this reference, please look with me at Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. All right, let's look at uh, verse from verse 17. From verse 17. From verse 17, it says, And this I say that the law, which was 430 years later, cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ, that it should make the promise of no effect. 18. For if the inheritance is of the law, it is no longer of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. 19. What purpose then does the law serve? It was added because of transgressions. Can you hear that? Say, what purpose does the law serve? It was added because of, of transgressions. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was appointed through angels by the hand of a mediator. 20. Now, a mediator does not mediate for one only, but God is one. 21. Is the Lord then against the promises of God? Certainly not. Did you hear that? That's what I've been talking about. For if there had been a law given, which could have given life, truly righteousness would have been by the law. 22. But the scripture has confined all under sin, that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. But before faith came, we were kept under God by the law, kept for the faith, which would afterward be revealed. Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So we are no longer under a tutor. So our topic is divine jubilee. I want to share my screen. Haven't made this statement now clear. That it is about the principle that we want to learn because the principle has relevance and uh, which we're going to take on. So I'll share my screen. That's our topic, Divine Jubilee, and it's about our liberty in Christ, as we've all seen uh, in those scriptures. So our outline, we'll look at the objectives, introduction, and then we have discussions of key lessons, and as uh, the end, we'll conclude. Um, so Divine Jubilee objectives. The objective is to understand the freedom. I would like to say and liberty, not just all liberty. The freedom, they mean the same thing, and liberty we have in Christ Jesus and the benefits thereof. Number two, to learn from the Old Testament Jubilee principles and draw similarities as applicable to today's believers according to the New Testament to learn from the Old Testament Jubilee principles and draw similarities as applicable to today's believers according to the New Testament, uh, according to the New Testament of the Bible, yeah? And the New Testament in terms of covenant. So Divine Jubilee introduction. So we'll take our text from Luke chapter four, verses 18 and 19. I'll just read it quickly. 
Um, but we're going to read Leviticus chapter 25, uh, 1 to 22. So somebody get ready to read that for us. Somebody get ready to read that for us. So Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. Um, I'll read the New King James Version. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Jubilee. What does it mean? Jubilee is a word from the Hebrew. It comes from the Hebrew word yobel, yobel referring to a ram's horn that was used at a as a trumpet. So this instrument called a shofar was used to mark Jewish religious occasions, including the one observed every 50 years and known as the year of Jubilee. And you see that in Leviticus chapter 25, verses 9 and 10. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 25, and we'll read verses 9 and 10, just to support this key point, and then we will read the entire uh, verses from 1 to 22. So please get ready to read. Leviticus chapter 25, verses 9 and 10. Leviticus 25, verse 9 and 10. Yes. Then you shall cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the 10th day of the seventh month on the day of atonement. You shall make the trumpet to sound throughout all your land. Verse 10. And you shall consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a Jubilee for you and each of you shall return to his possession and each of you shall return to his family. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. So, principle, not the law, the practice of the law. Because when some people are 50 years old, they'll begin to say, okay, Let's proclaim a jubilee and everything that happened in jubilee will begin to happen in our lives by reason of being 50 years old, either a country, a nation, an individual or a building. So that's the practice. But the principle of jubilee itself carries a lot of lesson, a lot of a uh, word of life, a lot of word of faith that we can learn from it in relationship to Jesus Christ, whom, who has brought us salvation today, who is the way, the truth, and the life. We are believers today in Christ Jesus, believers in God through Jesus Christ. We have been brought into the new covenant. So what principles in this jubilee, divine jubilee as we call it in this study applies to us. When we say divine, we are implying that it has to do with God. Divine has to do with God. So divine jubilee, the jubilee that God himself declares not the one man declares. So, Jubilee, that's our focus. That's what we want to learn. Jubilee, I just take that again. Jubilee ultimately comes from the Hebrew word, Jobel, 
referring to a ram's horn that was used as a trumpet, and as we have seen there in the verse we have just read. Uh, this instrument, while the instrument you can see there on the left is a symbol, uh, just when it was blown, it was at a call in the Jewish religious occasions, according to the law, that signifies something, signifies something very important, which are the things we're going to discuss. And one key one is the 50 years, known as the year of Jubilee, the year of Jubilee. As we were singing in that song, behold, he comes riding on a cloud at the trumpet's call, lift your voice, is year of jubilee. So what do we mean when we say divine jubilee, year of jubilee? What do we mean? Okay, let's read uh, Leviticus, rather, chapter 25, 1 to 22. The first person will read uh, uh, 10 verses, 1 to 10, and the second person will read the remaining 12 or 13 verses, please. Two people to read the scripture for us very quickly. Leviticus 25, verse 1 to 10. And the Lord spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land which I give you, then the land shall keep a Sabbath to the Lord. Six years you shall sow your field, and six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather its fruit. But in the seventh year, there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land, a Sabbath to the Lord. You shall neither sow your feed nor prune your vineyard. What grows on its own accord of your harvest, you shall not reap, nor gather the grapes of your untended vine. For it, for it is a year of rest for the land, and the Sabbath produce of the land shall be food for you, for you, your male, and female servant, your hired man, and the stranger who dwells with you, seven, for your livestock and the beasts that are in your land. All its produce shall be for food. Eight, and you shall count seven Sabbaths of years for yourself, seven times seven years, and the time of the seven Sabbath of years shall be to you 49 years. Then you shall cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month, on the day of atonement, you shall make the trumpet to sound throughout all your land. And you shall consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you and each of you shall return to his possession and each of you shall return to his family. Amen. Next person, please read 11 to 22. Leviticus 25 from 11. A jubilee shall that 50th year be unto you. Ye shall not sow, neither reap that which groweth out of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it of thy vine undressed. For it is the jubilee, it shall be holy unto you. Ye shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. In the year of this jubilee, ye shall return every man unto his position. And if thou sell out unto thy neighbor, or buyest out of thy neighbor's hand, ye shall not oppress one another. According to the number of years after the jubilee, thou shalt buy of thy neighbor, and according unto the number of years of the fruit, he shall sell unto thee. According to the multitude of years, thou shalt increase the price thereof. And according to the fewness of years, thou shalt diminish the price of it. For according to the number of the years of the fruit thou he shall unto thee, for seventeen, ye shall not therefore oppress one another, but thou shalt fear thy God, for I am the Lord your God. Wherefore ye shall do my statutes, and keep my judgment, and do them, and ye shall dwell in the land in safety. And the land shall yield her fruit, and ye shall eat your field, and dwell therein in safety. Verse 20. Mm. 
and maybe we shall see what shall we eat the seventh year. Behold, we shall not sow, nor gather in our increase. Then I will command my blessing upon you in the sixth year, mm -hmm. and it shall bring forth fruit for three years. And last verse, verse 22, and ye shall sow the eighth year and eat yet of old fruit until the ninth year, until her fruit come in, ye shall eat of the old stall. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So we've had that Bible reading. Thank you, um, Brother Dara and Brother Sonny, for reading the scriptures for us. So we'll continue with our introduction, and today we want to focus on uh, the usual what, discussing the what by way of introduction. So we have read the scripture. What are the different types of jubilee that people celebrate? Example, silver, jubilee. Can you mention others? These are the discussions. I'll just take the uh, questions and then we'll start discussing. And why do people celebrate jubilees? And what are the derived benefits? Those are the two points we want to discuss now. So why? What are the different jubilees that people celebrate that you know? Contributions? from what we have heard. Feel free, open the line and, and speak up. What are the different jubilees? Is it like what you said, uh, some said silver jubilee? When yeah, do, the exactly. Is, yes, like those. golden, when it is uh, 50 years, mm -hmm. then you have diamond jubilee. And um, diamond is 75. Um, yeah. so the, the centenary. Yes. So I think uh, it's a milestone that people have, uh, yeah, rich. So they like want to celebrate. So that is what I want to say for now. <laughs> okay. Thank you for that contribution. So it's a milestone. But why do people celebrate? Yeah, so those are very good examples. I think uh, you have you have done 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 very well mentioning those. So why do people celebrate these milestones? Why do people celebrate this jubilee? And what do they derive from celebrating it? Why do people celebrate these jubilees? The different jubilee, as our sister has told us, and these jubilees are celebrated. Some people do it for their own birthdays, right? And some people do it for their, what? They do it for their marriage. They do it for their organizations. They do it for their, um, like monarchs on the throne, they, they do it. So why do they do it? Why, why do they do these milestones? Let's hear, let's hear our thoughts on this. This is using, a, the things that are around us to remind ourselves as we are going on in this study. Why do people celebrate these milestones? So why do you, let's use every one of us at least has uh, his or her own birthday, which can represent uh, a, a, the Jubilee celebration. Why, why, why do you celebrate? This jubilee. Why do we celebrate this jubilee? Our our own jubilee. We are not talking about the Jewish jubilee this time. We'll come back to that. Why do you celebrate? Um, and what do you derive from it? Yes, please go ahead. Celebration means we are happy and we are thankful. We want to be thankful to God, most importantly, for giving us the opportunity the privilege and whatever, the blessing of going that far, of attending that mass to in our life, whatever we are celebrating, it's an appreciation of God for 
helping us to achieve whatever we are celebrating. Good appreciation to God. We expression of our happiness, yeah, that we've that we have achieved something, isn't it? And uh, what else? It's a time of joy, isn't it? And that's celebration, a time of joy. Glory be to God. What do people derive then from doing this? What do they derive in the physical sense? Yeah, in the physical sense, what, what do people derive when they do this? Do you think, do you think they really derive anything? Maybe they are happy at best, right? Maybe they are happy. Um, some people, they are clever enough, they're able to uh, do it, com commercialize it, so it's opportunity and then they make something out of it, right? But let's get back to why we are here. While Jubilee is an Old Testament practice, uh, the principle and meaning provide a deep learning to New Testament believers in Christ today. Can you discuss what lessons and similarities and give Bible reference. So now, let's now focus on what is Jubilee to a believer. And let's go back to the two scriptures we have read very quickly. So in Leviticus chapter 25, Leviticus chapter 25, we see there that the Bible says in verse 10, Verse 10, look at verse 10. It says, and you shall consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land. Liberty throughout all the land. To all its inhabitants, it shall be a jubilee for you. And each of you shall return to his possession. And each of you shall return to his family, to his family. If you read further, okay, let's go there. And you go to verse 14. He said, and if you sell anything to your neighbor or buy from your neighbor's hand, you shall not oppress one another. We will dig further and you will see some other provisions that were given, yeah, on this Jubilee, which is what we want to take out. As we said that the principle and meaning provide a deep learning to New Testament believers in Christ today. Can you discuss what lessons and similarities give Bible references? If we go back and take this scriptures we have read and then match it with Luke, Luke chapter four that we read, Luke chapter four, verse 18 and 19. Jesus came into the synagogue and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book to this place, he read, and of course that's uh, Isaiah chapter 61, if you go back there. He read, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So let's hear now, what do you think, or what in your understanding from this reading is the principle and meaning of Jubilee that applies or has similarity to us as believers today from what we have read in the Old Testament. Let's then look and begin to bring out some key points, okay? So Jubilee, as we have heard, has become a term people use for celebration. And in celebrating the real meaning is lost. Um, we've seen there that 
from the original Hebrew word. If we go back to where we started, that Jubilee comes from the Hebrew word Yovel, referring to a ram son that was used as a trumpet. That's the origin. But the event itself, these 50 years, what was the significance of it? What was the significance of it? We see that Jubilee, though has been turned into various celebrations, the real purpose was to demonstrate God's liberation and freedom for his people, an end of oppression and enslavement. In that 50 years, when Jubilee is proclaimed, the slaves were to be set free. Even the one that did not have money to redeem himself. Oppression of any sort were terminated. No one was to oppress another. So, and it was a time of God's unlimited favors and blessings upon his people. So key words to remember about divine jubilee are divine freedom, liberty, joy, and favors. And this is only found in Christ Jesus. This is what Jesus has done for us. We're going to dig deeper into this, how Christ indeed is our jubilee. Christ indeed is our jubilee. If we understand this divine jubilee that God declared, as we're going to study it in depth. So if we go back to Leviticus, let's go back to Leviticus now and begin to now look at it. And you shall consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty. Number one word you see there is what? Liberty, freedom throughout all the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you. It shall be a jubilee for you. And each of you shall return to his possession. And each of you shall return to his family. Liberty, restoration. What was lost is regained. Freedom is regained. And each of you shall return to his family. The family is always an important uh, element in God, not just for the celebration, but this time about the freedom that has been declared. Just imagine the situation where somebody might have been sold out as a slave, and that person does not have the freedom, but and is separated from his or her family. On the day of Jubilee, in the year of Jubilee, that person regains freedom and returns to the family. Jubilee. Let's look at another key point that uh, was mentioned here. It says, you will show in the sixth year, but you will not show in the seventh year, but you will eat the produce of the sixth year in the seventh year, the eighth year, and unto the ninth year. And what did God say? It says, how would this happen? Look at verse 18. It says, so you, will, you shall serve my statutes and keep my judgments and perform them, and you will dwell in the land in safety. That's another word, safety, note that. 19, then the land will yield its fruit and you will eat your field and dwell there in safety. Eat your field. There are many things. It says, and if you say 20, and if you say, what shall we eat in the seventh year, since we shall not sow nor gather in our produce, gather in our produce 21, then I will command my blessing on you in the sixth year, and it will bring forth produce enough for three years. So the 
Children of Israel will sow and reap their normal uh, sowing and reaping their harvest. But in the sixth year before the Jubilee, God said he will command his blessing upon their harvests. Their harvest will come, will be so uh, 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 great three times more that it will be enough for them to eat in the seventh year, eat in the eighth year, and on to the ninth year. Glory be to God. And you shall sow in the eighth year and eat all produce until the ninth year, until its produce comes in, you shall eat of the old harvest. Beloved brothers and sisters, when we then take this back to Luke chapter 4, verse 18, let's read it again. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, Jesus Christ declared. He said, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, they proclaim the good news, proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty, the same word we had there, liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, the same word we had, oppressed, oppression, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. NIV calls it to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. If you look at the um, Amplified, Amplified said to proclaim the year of God's favor, which abounds abounds, continually abound, profusely abounds. Glory be to God. So here we see in Christ Jesus what Jubilee was symbolic as we had started established that the law was the shadow of things to come. The reality is in Christ Jesus. We're going to be focusing now on Luke chapter 4, verse 18, and of course, with reference to Isaiah chapter 61, which was the prophetic uh, declaration of what will happen when the true jubilee of the Lord comes. And in fact, if you read that Luke chapter 4, and you start from verse 8, 16, you will remember that Jesus actually declared this word on a Sabbath day. He went into the Sabbath. Let's look at it a, a little. He went into the, uh, into the synagogue on a Sabbath, and he opened the scripture and read. Then look at verse 20 with me. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And 21, and he began to say to them, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. That the jubilee of God, the divine jubilee has come to all those who have come to Jesus Christ. Not the practice of the celebration with the ram horns, but the entering into the life that the Son of God gives to us as he has announced. Question is, are you having this life? Am I having this life? Is it true? If in the Old Testament, in the 50th year, what was sown in the 49th year will serve till the 52nd year. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God said it will be multiplied and it happened. How much more in Christ Jesus? If in the Old Testament, God said to the children of Israel in the 50th year, 
every oppression ceases, and it did happen. Every enslavement ceases, and it did happen. Everyone shall be free, how much more? The liberty that Jesus Christ has brought to us. And Jesus declared here, he said, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captive free, whatever captivity there is. Jesus is our jubilee. And to proclaim, to announce, to declare the day of God's unlimited favor. Oh, we have come into our jubilee is not just every 50 years. We have come into the divine jubilee that is constant, that never changes, and that never fails. This is what we want to dig deeper into every element of this. And it it is your right, it is my right, just as it was the right of the children of Israel whenever Jubilee was declared. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Or we'll just pause and take maybe questions, maybe contributions, whatever you have to add before we will pray. Because as our word of faith this month is divine Jubilee. And we shall experience and enjoy this provision of God, this blessing of God for our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Yes, please, go ahead. Pastor. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. I'm just to say thank you so much. It's overwhelming. And I could remember when God visited me, the word I was given to me, freedom, freedom, freedom. That was what I saw, the amazing love of God, the amazing grace of God, his mercy in Christ Jesus. So today you have said he is that based on the scripture. The law was a tutor leading to Christ. So it he taught us to wait for the people then to wait and to expect Christ. So we are living in the dispensation that Christ has come and has paid uh, the price for us. So I am so blessed and I'm happy <coughs> for his spirit, uh, his spirit and his weight from you. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you for that contribution. Yeah, thank you. Yes, Brother Sonny, your line is open. Yes, Pastor. Uh, I want to add something here to the discussion. Yes, as we see in the book of uh, Leviticus and the confirmation in Luke chapter 4. What I want to say here is that uh, if you look at the what happens in the days of old, in the times of the Jews, I think that to me was a shadow of the actual thing, of the substance mm -hmm. that we are going to have in Jesus Christ. Yes. The Jewish way of uh, celebrating the Jubilee, as we have here, if you look at it critically, I think it centers on the physical, mainly. Mm -hmm. It centers on the physical needs of the Jews in those days. They did not really get to the substance of the real thing, which has to do with the salvation of our soul, of our spirit being, our spirit mind transformation. Mm -hmm. Because as Christ said here, when he came, I think the Jews still carry that mentality that they thought that he was coming to give them the normal way of celebration, the physical one, the political uh, celebration and freedom. Mm -hmm. But Christ actually came for their spiritual uh, uh, jubilee, 
that will mm -hmm. give them, that will give us as Christians the access to God. Because basically we as human, from what we know, we've lost that God's favor in creation. When Adam sinned against God, we lost it all. So there was no other hope for man. As we can see in the book of Genesis chapter three, verse 19, whenever I read that portion of the Bible, I say, wow, this God is a wonderful God. God looked at man and told man, you are a dead man. You are going to die and go back to the grave, to the dust that you came from. And that was a hopeless situation for all creation. But the same God he made the way out to send Christ his son. He yes. came and died for us. Thank and you. I think Christ here is really, the, really represents the main thing. Christ is the key thing in God's program for our liberation, for our liberty, for our freedom. So this is yeah. what I really pick out from this discussion. Since it's a long uh, series of discussion, I think I'll still have more to add because of time. That is Good. the picture of what I, I picked from today's discussion. Thank, Thank you very much. Um, okay, Messi, your hand is up. Thank you, you're welcome also. Uh, we're willing to do your introduction at uh, the end, but thank you for raising hand. Please go ahead, Messi. Open your line and speak. You've raised your hand, Messi. So go ahead and speak. The floor is yours. Okay, Pastor, good day and good day, everybody. I'm really blessed for the teaching that we have received this morning, uh, this afternoon. And what I have to, con to contribute there has to do with when we talk about the Jubilee, the year of Jubilee, Jubilee of the children of God. Mm -hmm. Because we are talking about the spiritual aspect of life because God is a spirit. Yes. Whatsoever thing is drinking to us now, is according to the spirit aspect of his own gift to us. Mm -hmm. Now, when we talk about Jubilee, what I have to contribute is that whoever that has to be free was already in bondage. He has, mm -hmm. he has been kept in captivity. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason why we need that freedom. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the, the captivity of the children of, of God, even in the world today, is the bondage of sin. Many have been in bondage of sin, sinning and, you know, serving the devil outside their knowledge. And that is the sign of bondage, which we need to be free, which we need Jubilee to celebrate the life of Christ. Because when I listen, you talk about having access to that life of Christ. It's the right of a child of God to have the life of Christ, to live the life of Christ. But you see, the bondage of sin has denied us of that life. And I believe that when we are celebrating Jubilee, because we have entered into the life of Christ, it's the year that the Lord, because the Lord says that one thousand years is just like a one day to the Lord. We don't wait till 50 years before we now begin to celebrate. That day, even today, that this gospel has come to us, is our year of Jubilee to begin to accept Christ and also celebrate him in our life every day. Mm -hmm. I believe that is my understanding of Jubilee because if a child of God, he says he's a child of God, is not coming out of the bondage of sin. Mm -hmm. You see that he is still in bondage. He's not celebrating that Jubilee that the Lord Jesus has given unto us. Mm -hmm. So in the New Testament, we have seen the love of Christ in our life and we have, we have to accept it to also be a part of this celebration of the Jubilee of the children of God. Thank you, praise the Lord. Thank you, thank you. That's excellent, uh, Sister Messi. Thank you for that contribution. Indeed, um, you've just set the tone for uh, the next level of the study when we come back. Because we've enumerated a number of things now um, that the Jubilee in the Old Testament brought for the children of Israel. And we now want to look at how Christ has brought even better, because Christ has brought better covenant unto us. Those same things and even much more than that. And you've made that very valid point again, that for one to be free, the person must have been in captivity. You mentioned the captivity of sin. And 
perhaps many don't realize that every sin is controlled by the devil. So the captivity of the devil and sin uh, go hand in hand. And through Jesus Christ, we have been delivered from this oppression and this captivity and every other oppression. And that's what we're going to be um, looking at deeper. So Sister Messi, thank you very much. Thank you very much for that contribution. So we want to round off at this point. This today was introduction, as we said, as we always do. It's Bible study. You're going to go back and dig deeper. We've enumerated all that God or a number of things God declared. Leviticus chapter 25. You go read it again. Read Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. Read Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 3. And we've enumerated what the people of old Israel enjoyed, what God declared should happen to them, happen for them on the day of Jubilee and in the year of Jubilee. And we've said, through Jesus Christ, God has given us all that, all those blessings, and much more than that. And so you're going to look at your life for each of those. This is the assignment now. And say, am I under any captivity of sin? There are many captivities, actually, but all are the, under the mastered of captivity, the devil. So let's enumerate them. Sin. We talk about demonic possession, your fear that there, all manner of uh, captivity. Look at your life. Whatever still looks like a captivity, Jesus has set you free and it's time to declare jubilee. That's what we are in for this month. We must experience jubilee that God, God has given you jubilee. God has given us jubilee through Jesus Christ. And it's time for you to experience it, to express it, to enjoy it. And that's why we also looked at what people do when they say jubilee, they begin to celebrate. And I was asking, why do they celebrate? At the end, you probably take time and look at it again. You find that there's really not much more than to show that they are indeed uh, have hit that milestone. So your jubilee must be expressed. That's the key word. Your jubilee must be expressed. Your jubilee that Jesus is and through Jesus Christ, your freedom, your liberty, our freedom, our liberty must be expressed in the life we live. As our sister has just shared with us. So, this is the assignment that we're going to be digging deeper. Let me summarize the assignment again. Number one is for you to take the three scriptures, Leviticus chapter 25, and read one through to the end. Read, I only stop at 22 to the end. Distill out what God promised the people of old under the old covenant that they will have, they will enjoy in the day and year of Jubilee. And compare that to your life today in Christ Jesus. Number two, look at yourself and say, what in this provision of Christ is lacking? What captivity there may be? Am I fully enjoying the liberty, the freedom that Jesus Christ has given me? And we will talk about different freedom as we go on. I believe God that by the time we meet next Sunday, you will have a testimony. Now let us pray. And you will look at other scriptural passages, yeah, references to um, support this freedom, this liberty, this life that Jesus Christ has given us, or God has given us through his son, Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ has brought to us. We want to pray. We want to start with those that are still struggling to lead a righteous life, because Christ has redeemed us. 
The Bible says, if anyone be in Christ is a new creation, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. It's only in Jesus Christ we have this jubilee, the true jubilee. You could see that jubilee has become just a world celebration. I mean, outside the, Jew, the Judaism, right? Those who really practice it. But the word is used everywhere in the world, jubilee, jubilee. But it's just a milestone celebration. Whereas the real jubilee is life in Christ. Are you in Christ? So if you are not in Christ, first prayer is for you. Then the second prayer will be for everybody. Whatever captivity, anything in your life that needs to go, that you must enjoy the freedom of God, you're going to speak it to God and we're going to agree. So let's pray the first prayer point. Everybody, let's join together. Pray with me. And you who know yourself, you're still struggling with one habit or the other, sin is dangerous. Christ has set you free from sin. So pray. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for bringing me to my time and season of jubilee through Jesus Christ. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ died for me. And now I believe in my heart that he has set me free. And so, Father, I confess my sins before you. Forgive me all my sins and wash me with the precious blood of Jesus. I repent of my sins. I forsake them. I shall no more go back to them. So I ask, Heavenly Father, give me your spirit grace. Give me your strength. Give me your enablement to live and walk in righteousness through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. I declare my jubilee over the power of sin, over the captivity of sin. I am free through, I am free from the power of sin through Jesus Christ, my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now for the rest of us, let's pray again. Pray with me as a heavenly father. Thank you for bringing me into my time and season of divine jubilee. Heavenly Father, every form of captivity and oppression in my life by your divine jubilee through Jesus Christ, that freedom, that liberty, that deliverance, that salvation you have given me, that every form of captivity and oppression come to an end, cease now. Spiritual captivity cease in my life, physical captivity, every form of captivity, every form of oppression cease in my life now and in my family in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray for yourself now and expand it, whatever that captivity is. Oh, you have been struggling with one thing. You know, it has become a captivity. It has become an oppression, whatever oppression there may be. Hand it over to God. It is your year of Jubilee. And the year of Jubilee is not just a year. It is a time. It's a season. It's a day. And in Christ Jesus, we have Jubilee all the time. Jubilee all the time. So declare it is your year of Jubilee, your day of Jubilee, your time of Jubilee, your season of Jubilee in Christ Jesus. And all oppression must go. Every enslavement must go. Now open your mouth and ask him, Father your unlimited favor. Let it come upon me and encompass me like a shield, your unlimited favor. And now go ahead and ask God for that specific favor. What is that thing, the specific favor of God that you need? God will bring it through in your life. It is our time and season of divine jubilee, God's unlimited favor. Let's bring our prayer to a close. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now let's agree together. You know, according to Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, it says, if two of you shall agree concerning anything that you ask, the Father will do it. And that's it. Just your simple faith in God. Trusting him according to his word. He will do it. Let us agree together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. And we thank you 
again for bringing us into our season, time, moment of divine jubilee in Christ Jesus. Lord Jesus, you are our jubilee. You are our freedom. You are our liberty. You have given us freedom. You have given us liberty. You have given us access to your Father, to all the riches, the blessing, the prosperity of God in Christ Jesus. As it is written, if anyone be in Christ, is the new creation. All things have passed away. We will, all things have become new. You have redeemed us from the curse of the Lord Jesus Christ that we might inherit the blessing of Abraham. So, Father, we agree that every captivity in our lives, in our families, in our children, in our business, in our career, in our uh, uh, Christian work, services, ministries, whatever they may be, in our neighborhood, in our nation, Lord, whatever captivity there may be that affect us, let it go now in the name of Jesus. Let every form of oppression cease in our lives in the name of Jesus. Spiritual oppression, physical oppression, whatever oppression there may be, we agree that they must go now in the name of Jesus. And our Heavenly Father, we agree that your unlimited favor, favors beyond boundaries, favor beyond our imagination, let them come upon us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, make way for us, O oh God. And Father, by your Holy Spirit, help us to continue to walk in your righteousness, to please you all the days of our lives. Let that eternal life, an abundant life you have given to us through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, manifest in us. And let all the blessings of the Jubilee, the divine Jubilee, be our portion now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.